Welcome on in to this video covering the Holy Shift report for the total solar eclipse in Aries coming up on Wednesday, April 19th. And uh, I hope y'all had a useful healing full moon in Libra, right? That happened on the 6th of this month. Um, you know, it, it, it's all tying into what's coming, okay? Um, I'm going to talk in this video about this major Aries energy that we're in right now, that we're coming into over the next six months with solar eclipse, right? The solar eclipses, or any eclipse for that matter, is bringing in an energy that's going to be unfolding over the next six months. It's life-changing. It's powerful, okay? It's in Aries, not only catalyzing a new beginning um, over these next six months, as I said, but... You know, it could bring a very um, motivating energy to get some change in your life. Um, might be volatile. I mean, I've, we've got to discuss the pros and cons with energy um, <clears throat> because I wouldn't be honest with you if I didn't cover both angles of it, right? It can go either way. We have free will. But, um, you know, in a, car in a carnal sign of, of Aries, we are looking at this being an action-oriented new beginning, where you and others are taking some kind of initiative on matters of personal interest. And yes, this is coming out of that full moon in Libra we just had two weeks ago of letting go of others, partnerships, okay? Maybe some um, mental indecision on your part. And with this eclipse of being conjunct Jupiter, well, you know, a lot of astrologers are talking about the benefit qualities of Jupiter, which is true, but it's also very expansive. So again, let's look at this with an even keel here uh, and understand that, yes, it could be a very empowering new start where we have a sense of bravery. We have more of an openness to adventure in Aries, okay, and we're exploring new things in life, and that's certainly going to help. I think that Jupiter is there to help and assist with that, but also Jupiter could really... Uh, be bringing some kind of expansion to this, um, gosh, explosive. Aries can be an angry, quick-witted type of energy, so quick wit is not a bad thing, but, you know, flying off the handle, impulsive type, right, uh, might want to look out for that. This is going to be our second new moon in Aries. Uh, the first one was March 21st, and it was at zero degrees, and if you missed it, I put out a video really comparing and contrasting the energies between that new moon and this new moon, right? This is, that one was at zero degrees. Think of the full card, right? That's the example I gave in my video. This one is at, I believe, 29 degrees in Aries. So think of the emperor card. It's a lot more of a mature, Taurus leaning type of energy, more grounded, hopefully grounded manifestation, more responsible. I've got previous videos on this. Um, although that first one we had in March, very potent. Just consider that... It's layers, like I said before, layers of Aries energy. We're in Aries season. Another key thing to keep in mind um, is that this is the beginning of Aries and Libra eclipses over the next year and a half, right? Because the nodes are shifting into Aries and Libra. They've been in Taurus and Scorpio over the last year and a half. If you're looking at how this is going to impact you, I think it's really good to see where Aries and Libra are showing up in your chart. Um, also where Scorpio and Taurus showing up in your chart because, um, yeah, those are the nodal energies that have been highlighted that we're coming out of and that we're going into, okay? I'm going to talk more about this when we get into the individual signs uh, that where, you know, we do the tarot readings for the solar eclipse. Um, that's a, did another video to come if you want to know more specifically how it's hitting your rising sign. Uh, those videos will be coming out. If you don't want to miss it, make sure that you have activated the bell for notifications that you're subscribed so that you won't miss it. Okay, but back to talking about the context of this energy. Okay, and then I'm going to get into talking about individual uh, aspects. All right, but the context is, as I said before, a lot of Aries energy, we're, you know, it's, it's a very fertile energy uh, this time of year in the spring. Aries is uh, very fond of saying things like, the, the right time is now, okay, now, now, now. And um, I'm definitely feeling it with the energy, all things considered. 
Um, look at the fact that this month we only have one retrograde and it's going to be with Mercury going retrograde in Taurus on the 21st until May 14th. And from this point on, we are looking at the retrogrades just stacking up really, really thick. So, you know, I've heard people like Leo King advice and I could definitely see it, you know, myself. Um, it's pretty clear to see that, you know, the time to take action is now, 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 okay? Uh, because by July, we're going to have, we're going to be in, you know, five retrogrades thick. And then in September, it just gets worse, right? With eight retrogrades by September, that's going to be the worst, hardest month in terms of getting forward movement, okay? And then we're going to end this year with six, you know, retrograde energies in December. So, if there's any time to act this year, it is now. Act, 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 take action if you can. I cannot emphasize it enough because whatever you do or don't take action on right now, the consequences are going to be felt by the end of this year, definitely October. Yes, when we're coming out of that six month time frame of this culminating, right? This eclipse culminating. So I want to challenge you with this question. Ask yourself right now, how do you want your situation to be different by the last quarter of this year, October, November, December? How do you want your situation, your life, your relationships to be different by, but more specifically with you, okay? Because we can't really control others. We can only control ourselves. How do you want you and your situation to be different uh, by the last quarter of this year? And what do you need to do right now what do you need to initiate or kickstart right now to facilitate that? But because this is a very key time for reinvention in your life. Okay, so let's talk about Jupiter conjunct this eclipse within about six degrees. Um, as I said before, on the bright side, it could bring in a lot of positivity and optimism with whatever it is that you're beginning, whatever it is that you're starting. But, you know, on the downside, just to be careful with going to extremes, overextending, biting off more than you can chew, being overly optimistic, overly asserting yourself, and also in extreme cases, we might see excessive aggression. I'm going to talk more about that in a moment. Um, I think that's more on a collective level, but yes, of course, it can come out on an individual level, right? This eclipse is also going to be close to Chiron in Aries, which is squaring Mars in Cancer. And that, that's important because, you know, Mars is uh, the ruler of Aries, okay? So, and also I think this is not only important to people who are Aries, but also uh, if you are Chiron in Aries generation like myself, you are going through your Chiron return, okay, where... Um, I'm talking about ages like 46 to 53 years old. You're, you're coming into your Chiron return, like I am, or maybe you're in it right now, um, 50, 51 years old, or you're coming out of it 53-ish years old, okay? This is a very especially triggering time for us with Jupiter also putting a magnifying lens on it. I don't know if you noticed there's been a lot of talk, like yesterday on Twitter, uh, Gen X was trendy okay and i've been following a lady on instagram who's putting out a lot of uh generation x posts i'm generation x right 1975 and um, she's been putting out a lot of uh, content speaking to our generation and the issues that we were raised with you know i think that all the energy is really magnifying having us look at um, these issues um Yes, generationally, but I think collectively, regardless of whether or not you're Chiron and Aries generation, right, in your natal chart, um, we're all having a look at these issues of where was I not nurtured or nourished um, in my home family environment, or where did I not feel a sense of belonging, um, emotional insecurities, childhood emotional neglect uh, may be coming up. And, but again, especially with the Chiron and Aries generation, we've got this soul wound of life of not feeling valued by others because maybe we weren't given the attention. We were, you know, latchkey kids left alone to our own devices, you know? Um, and we just don't have any sense of belonging. And again, regardless of what generation you're coming from, this energy is bringing about this sense of, I don't know where I belong. 
or I don't feel I belong to anything or anyone. But, you know, and that's especially, I think, really the case if you're a Chiron and Aries generation like myself, very much deeply feeling that at this time. You know, going back to Chiron and Aries in general, um, we're looking at collectively some issue of humiliation uh, maybe being a factor here, especially on the heels of this full moon in Libra two weeks ago, where we are looking at indecision in, in relationships or deliberating about endings and who am I in a relationship and what am I getting out of this and look at the exchange and why am I doing this or I didn't get what I had bargained for, okay? There's a lot of sensitivities around uh, these new changes that we're coming into with this solar eclipse in Aries that are creating a lot of emotional inner tension, um, insecurity. Again, I can, I can cite Chiron and Aries, but also squaring Mars and Cancer. Both energies are bringing up this inner emotional tension and, uh, and insecurity. And perhaps a realization of, oh my, I'm going to have to go it alone, kind of like the Chiron and Aries generation uh, coming home to an empty house at five years old. Oh yeah, we raised ourselves. We absolutely did. Um, how many kids died during that generation because they were, uh, you know, hey, yeah, go on and sit in the back of the pickup truck and they got thrown out and killed um, because if you didn't hang on or you didn't have the strength to hang on when, they, when that truck hit a bump, well, God help you. You know, a lot of kids in my generation didn't make it out alive because of stuff like that. And so, um, you know, realizing that maybe the only person that is going to be your hero, your own hero, is yourself, okay? Um, and others are not really along for the ride. And whether it's intentional or not, um, the brass tax of it is it's, it's almost an every man for himself type of energy or vibe. And I'm going to say also, especially with the North Node uh, in Taurus, shifting into Aries, we're looking at... Um, actually, you know, the last five years, the North Node has been in personal signs, putting the South Node in interpersonal or transpersonal signs. And for me, that I translate that as just a very long ongoing energy, about six years here, of people going their own way, having to find their own feet, and um, it's, I think, created a lot of scenarios, a lot of things in people's lives where um, they're creating or they're valuing hyper-independence. And, you know, like I said, concurrently along this timeline, people have been releasing these transpersonal, interpersonal um, values and these signs, and... Um, we're not going to come out of that until, um, you know, we get through this next year and a half of um, North Node and Aries, and then it'll go North Node into Pisces after that, um, where perhaps people will be shifting and suddenly realizing the value of others. However, that's going to put us into more of a going after um, partnering with spirit, maybe, um, partnering with charities or uh, faith-based communities. Um, I, I, it's, it's going to be a transition, I think, slowly away from this self-self focus, but we've got another year and a half of this after coming out of, what, the last four and a half years of this as well. So um, I know that people say with these nodes, you know, that ideally we've got to be balancing these contrasting energies, but in real life, as far as I can tell, what I see is that... Uh, the North Node is taking precedence, right? People finding their own feet with the North Node in Taurus in the last year and a half. That has been taking precedence. I've seen it in my personal life. I've seen it in the lives of others. And I think that theme is going to continue over the next year and a half with the North Node in Aries. Um, the South Node is a point of release, right? So if, you know, um, collective partnerships, trans transpersonal relationships or interpersonal relationships have been hindering you personally, we are being forced to release it, okay? Um, but unfortunately, not everybody knows how to not throw the baby out with the bathwater, and I think we're seeing a lot of that presently, okay? Um, and I'm pretty sure that people are going to look back at this time frame when we get out of the next year and a half, and they're looking at the, these six years of the North Nodes being in these personal signs, 
I think they're going to look back with some regret. I just, this is my personal whatever, okay, but they're probably going to ask themselves coming out of the North Node in Aries, did I have to cut that person out? Was that really necessary? Um, probably not. Okay, be careful what you're throwing out and that things are in balance. Uh, maybe you don't get rid of the person. Maybe you get rid of the way you relate to that person. Or maybe you take a step back for a time and a season and it's a temporary uh, separation, but not a permanent. Okay, so just be discerning, I think is what I want to encourage of all of you. Also with the Sun and Moon in Aries and, you know, the North Node in Taurus, not far off, right? Um, it's just another layer of energy pushing us to be more self-directed at this time in our lives and um, really putting a focal point on our outer and inner world um, and being very directed in that respect and um, communicating that to other people. Uh, this is what I'm thinking, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm valuing um, in order to get the change that I need to get in my life, in my life path, my life direction. I think we're going to see a lot more of that coming up. Okay, let's talk about some other minor aspects that are going on during this time that I find personally interesting. Um, we've got Venus and Gemini squaring Saturn and Pisces uh, during this time. So I think, you know, this gives more nuance to what was previously mentioned. I feel this energy is showing us that, you know, what we have valued individually on a personal level is being challenged or blocked in some way by uh, restrictions coming from others. People, as I said before, are having a very independent, self-directed, um, maybe even hyper-independent air about them right now. And you pair that with some difficulty with them valuing maybe what you value um, or sharing resources, it, it, there's a challenge there, okay? And essentially, um, I think this is bringing about a lot of scenarios in people's lives where people can't or won't give to others for whatever reason. They're finding that they're going to have to go it alone uh, because people are not being helpful for one reason or another. They either can't or they won't. And, and again, it, may, it might not be anything personal. Um, in some cases, it absolutely is. They don't value what you value. They don't share your vision or your approach to going after it. So this can be very hard, right? This is the downside that I was talking about earlier, where, yes, I think this is helping us come into alignment with within ourselves about what we value, uh, which inevitably is going to help bring us into alignment with others who are clearly seeing what they value and don't value, right? And who shares values authentically, right? That's helping on the positive. But on the negative is that, you know, to get to that point, we first have to really uh, recognize where the values aren't or where they are no longer. And um, that there's power in agreement. And when there's a lack of it, there's a, when there's a lack of agreement, there's a lack of power, right? Um, because, you know, two coming into agreement are better than one going it alone, right? When you're walking in agreement, you're walking in mutual support. But I do feel that first people have to understand that this, some of the people they've been walking with are not in agreement. That's why there's not, these are not empowering unions. Hence, the full moon in Libra two weeks ago where we had to, like, let go of that. Even if you're just dealing with people who are being, you know, wishy well, I hate to say it, it's kind of a Piscean thing, but it's the indecision of Libra. Of, well, I mean, I'd want to help you, but I just don't think I can get involved right now. I, mean, I you know, sorry. That kind of stuff where um, no harm, no foul, but, or at least it seems that way on the surface, but the substance of it is I'm not being empowered here in this union. This is not mutually empowering. And so not only is it hard because of, of that, but also because we're social creatures, we're really not meant to go it alone, but a lot of us are finding ourselves in circumstances. I'm meeting a lot of people. I have over the last, gosh, four or five months now, I'm meeting a lot of people that are finding themselves in this situation. It's it's kind of a, it's disturbing to say the least, um, because many of us, we have had our traditional support systems uh, culturally broken down, and that's Mars and Cancer, you know, for example, you know, the breakdown of the family unit, um, food insecurity that's been going on, the cost of living crisis that's been going on, the attacks on femininity, okay, the war on women. I could probably talk more about that, by the way, 
Uh, for those of you who like my political content and um, you want me to do more political astrology and more political tarot, make sure you like or give me a comment down below because I'm only going to do it if there's engagement and support for that on this platform because I take a big risk every time I put that content out because you know, you know the drill on here, okay? And if you don't, you need to get on Twitter, okay, and find out, all right? <laughs> But I will say, um, what I am going to put out here, uh, where I'm planning, God willing, is um, in May, when we get into Taurus season, okay, I am going to try to talk more about um, estrangement that has been going on in families. Um, a lot of us, myself included, uh, have dealt with these things going back, not just currently, but, oh, it, it goes through my bloodline, I'd say about four or five generations back as far as I'm aware of, okay? And I know many of you relate to it. It is something that I'm going to be studying more and I'm going to be sharing with you on this topic more um, during Taurus season, May-ish, okay? So make sure that you are subscribed if you want to be in on that. Um, also this summer, God willing, I'm going to hopefully talk more about loyalty because I feel like that has been lost in a lot of families. Um, and it's part of it. It's particularly here in the United States, uh, culturally, the breakdown of the family, the war on women. There is a lack of loyalty within families. Um, and I think that's a really good topic to discuss when we come into Leo season this summer. So just side note, um, the, these are these are issues that I think are important right now um, that I'm probably going to be speaking to over the, you know, in the coming months. All right, moving on back to these other energies. Um, that I think help give us nuance to the main energies, right? Uh, Neptune and Pisces opposing Ceres and Virgo. This to me is another layer of feminine energy, mothering energy that is getting triggered right now, uh, where people are having to ask themselves, how do I nurture or nourish uh, myself and others um, in a practical way on a practical everyday basis, especially when there are restrictions or limitations or blockages um, with Saturn and Pisces, or perhaps I can't even get clear on why, right? Because Neptune is, this is your blind spot, like what, maybe you're not seeing clearly what the obstacle is or what the karma is. Um, very spiritual house as well, um, where a lot of healing work needs to happen in terms of, I'm, get, I'm hearing re-envisioning, okay, re-envisioning how do we nurture and nourish ourselves in a practical way um, because there's some kind of pushback between maybe what you've idealized uh, this to be versus what actually needs to be done, okay? Uh, so we're going through a lot of, um, I think also karmic lessons having to do with self-sabotage, martyrdom, self-deception who you thought would help you, who you thought you could help. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> okay. Um, but they won't. Um, they're not going to help you or they actually didn't want your help. They just wanted you to, you know, maybe give them a um, free pass out of jail, right? <laughs> Without actually making any changes. Um, you, you thought they were going to give them back. You thought they were going to reciprocate, um, and, and they didn't. Um, who you believed maybe should help you, um, they maybe won't. Okay, a lot of, mm, let's bring it down to reality, like uh, maybe you idealized or hoped or wished for that, but the truth is, um, no. No. It could be sober. I will say on the positive, there is an Earth trine involving Pluto in Aquarius and Juno in Taurus. And that's causing changes um, to values. I mean, right with um, Uranus and Taurus, okay, that's and that's been going on for a while. We've all been going through uh, an overhaul in our value system, all right. But that that the changes that are being brought up, the upheaval that's coming in in within people about their value system, as I said before, is I think pushing pushing. Uh, intensely us to come into alignment within ourselves so we can come into alignment with others about where we truly share values, okay, rather this, than this illusory crap going on. And again, people are getting limitations with others and they don't understand why. Oh, it might be because they truly don't share your values. So 
thought they did, you hope they did, but they don't at the end of the day. Surprise, surprise. And you might have made yourself a victim out of it, okay? Just saying. Um, you're, and I don't know why I'm getting, you might have thought you were in agreement about something, but your reasons for coming into agreement, your motivations, your agendas, again, going on in the background and the unseen, maybe even the subconscious, out of alignment, out of alignment, that's being brought up, uh, brought to the surface for everybody to look at the sober reality of that. And the good news is it's forcing us to come into align alignment, um, or at least, you know, thinking about it with Mercury and Taurus and that going retrograde, I do feel um, well into mid-May, we will be reflecting on, why did I value that? Did they ever really value what I gave them? Like, I, I felt like that was a gift. It was a sacrifice. Um, but maybe to them, they did, I gave them something I valued. Projection, right? But they didn't actually value that. That's not part of their value systems. Therefore, that's why I'm feeling like I'm not being valued. I'm just saying. I'm putting it out there. I'm going to flow right now for somebody. Um, use that side note, Mercury retrograde and Taurus that's coming up for us. Use it to reflect on what you now value, what is right. Because that's another, another. I think, manifestation of it is people saying, what about now? Um, maybe we did, we came together and it was a beautiful coming together because we were on the same page. We did have the same motivation. We did have the same agenda. But now things have changed and shifted and I don't value that any longer or they no longer value that, okay? or values have shifted in some respect where something else is taking priority or precedence. I think you get the idea. Um, I think it's people coming to the realization of what they can and can't build from with other people and having to look at where is the solid foundation from which they can build within themselves and yes, in relationship to others. So, um, you know, you might be coming into this, this energy of, of realizing from that full moon in Libra two weeks ago, oh my God, these are not my ride or die peeps. They are not. <laughs> I thought they were, um, but they're not. Noted. Okay. Uh, so now who is? Who is? And how do I come into better alignment with that, with those unions? Also, I think another positive energy here that's helping to support, you know, this um, Neptune opposition with Ceres um, is, you know, this water sign involving Neptune and Pisces um, and part of Fortune and Scorpio and Pallas and Cancer. It is creating a lot of emotions um, surrounding money issues. Okay, again, values once again. Um, po possibly having to do with family matters when we're talking about cancer and resources, shared resources in Scorpio. So, you know, I think this is honestly, if you look at the chart, I feel the energy is pushing us to um, the money matters, okay? And cancer and, pi and Scorpio are pu pushing us to uh, really look at these illusions and delusions in terms of, and maybe idealization, wishful thinking that really is not grounded um, in matters of being charitable to a point of uh, self-sabotage, self-victimization, martyrdom. Maybe you paid it forward, okay? And then you didn't get paid. Why? Why is this happening? Some of you are asking yourself, you put in the work, um, so why is it not paying off? You made the investment, you made a contribution, so where's my payoff? Um, and it's not adding up, it's not making sense with this Neptunian energy. And we're being forced to look at that. Why is it not adding up at the end of the day? Um, that's where the money issues are pointing us um, to look and, and address. Now moving on to Juno and Taurus, the supposing part of Fortune and Scorpio. Um, Again, what you personally valued or idealized is not is getting some kind of pushback from other people because they don't share your vision or your approach to going after your dreams, okay? And yes, it might involve shared resources and how you partner with others in life to gain fortune. In some way, this is at odds with your personal values. And with Scorpio in the mix here, I think this could be very intense emotionally intense, quite cathartic, bringing about some
brutal endings and separations. Honestly, you've probably already been through a lot of them with the last year and a half with the South Node in Scorpio. But, you know, it's being brought back up to the surface yet again. Maybe recalling what has occurred over the last year and a half with endings and separations, these death rebirth cycles, yes, maybe involving debt, shared finances, inheritances, okay? The bright side of this, the silver lining, is that I think, as I said before, it's helping us to get out of misaligned um, relationships where there are misaligned values and realizing these painful situations are forcing us to um, recognize and realize the contrast between our own values and that of others and trying to uh, find at least uh, some type of um, relationship alignments where maybe you don't entirely share values or um, or you don't share the same vision uh, but at least both parties can um, help one another in a complementary way to get what they both value, all right? Maybe, maybe I have something you need and you have something I need and, you know, we are able to kind of, I, it's almost like I'm getting a cross-pollination type of thing. We're able to kind of cross-pollinate in a way where we're not at odds, where what I'm asking out of you is not putting you at odds with yourself and your own empowerment, right, and vice versa. So I think we're having to come into seeing that. Now, with Pluto and Aquarius at zero degrees, opposing Pallas and Cancer, Mars there is, too, is there too, okay? So there's a lot of powerful change going on with people collectively right now. Um, it's pushing empowerment to people on an individual level. But that's being opposed by a lot of, you know, cranky, fussy energy. I mentioned this earlier in the last video I put out on the full moon in Libra, okay? Uh, angry, irritated energy as well, um, involving masculine and feminine energies. And you see that in the news with it going on. I think like over the last, what is it, the last month or so, we've seen two uh, mass shootings involving transgenders or um, people that are at least part of this pronoun community, okay? And people asking, what is going on with men? As I said in that previous video, why is it that the only way I'm mostly seeing men relate to children these days is dressed up as women? And I know that what I'm saying is politically incorrect, but it's the truth. I'm seeing it constantly with the drag shows, you know, story time with children, drag story time hour. Why are we not seeing a traditional fatherhood in an equal or maybe greater light or having the same exposure publicly? Um, what is going on with men? Um, and, and also, you know, we're seeing the, the war on women, which, I mean, you know, that's, we've had that trending hashtag, adult female human, where and we're looking at what's happening to women's sports. These trophies are going to biological males. And we're seeing um, sponsorship contracts from major brands like Nike, Tampax even, um, Bud Light, uh, <laughs> Olay. Um, gosh, I could go on. They are giving lucrative contracts to biological men. Um, I, I could go on a big rant. I, I'm already getting into hot water, getting into this stuff. I'm probably pissing people off. They're clicking away now. But the reality is what is happening to women, okay? Um, Mars is there in a sign, Cancer, having to do with the mother of the Zodiac, okay? So, um, and, and you gotta realize, um, going back to this Pluto and Aquarius energy that is opposing that, um, Pluto is a higher octave of, of Mars. So we're seeing these themes of, you know, warfare and anger and rebellion, and particularly with the Aries energy as well, you know, where the Aries Aquarius energy is bringing up a lot of, I really think that we're going to be seeing a lot more protests and riots, buckle up, get ready for it. Um, and I think it's going to be over matters having to do with the right to autonomy, the right to individuation, the right to self-determination. And with Black Moon Lilith and Leo during this time, 
people getting the attention that they feel they deserve or getting what they want, um, no matter what conflict comes up, they're going to do it. Um, this is not a conflict avoidant energy anymore. Oh, no, 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 no. That, that kind of went out the door with that full moon in uh, Libra two weeks ago, right? <laughs> Um, and Aquarius, side note, I'm, I'm, I've got an Aquarius thallium, so <laughs> uh, I am an Aquarius sun, um, Mercury, and in heaven. So um, Aquarius knows when to follow the rules. I, I think the wise ones do, okay, the, the more mature ones, right? We know when to follow the rules, but we also know when to break them. And Aries doesn't give a damn. Aries is going to do what it wants and deal with the consequences later. Both of them, more or less, have this don't tread on me type of energy. So, yes expect more riots to ramp up okay and going back to this Pluto energy in, in Aquarius I think that we are seeing we have been seeing and it's not gonna soon leave us right this is a long transit uh, painful ending separations and death and rebirth cycles um, in relationships okay quite possibly involving people who you deeply identified with people who have maybe challenged your sense of self your values Again, maybe because they didn't value you in the way that you need or want, or they didn't appreciate the way that you put value into them because it's not their value system. Uh, painful as that might be, right? Um, you're having to make adjustments. And um, these are people who maybe also, they challenged how you actualized yourself and your values in this life. With Pluto and Aquarius, if the power dynamics have been off in relationships, if they've been out of balance, if there were hidden agendas, power plays, exploitation going on, um, secrets, mistrust, um, Pluto is going to expo expose this and flush it out. And some of you already know from the last year and a half of the South Node in Scorpio, right, which is ruled by Pluto. So um, this has been revealing that um, people are maybe not who you thought they were or um, who you wanted them to be or maybe who they used to be. Things have changed, okay? If something is, <laughs> uh, they've changed, you've changed, or um, it's, it, surprise, it's not what you thought, okay? Um, it's not what you believed or wanted to believe. And um, what's going to happen as a result is that uh the way we do relationships is is going to change and it'll never go back to the old way so let's talk about what's coming up next with this um just briefly this uh lunar eclipse in scorpio on may 5th okay um and i do have to put it out there because i know some of you are going to get really ambitious and rambunctious with this solar eclipse and be like oh wow let's go do something and, and I'm kind of there with you, all right? But just kind of mm, hold your horses a little bit because we're still we're still in a bit of flux, right? We're, we got one more. Let's get through the other eclipse in Scorpio on the 5th um, because that's helping to, I think, catalyze this new beginning even further by helping to close things out even further, okay? Helping to make it more clear of what is no longer so that we can fully put ourselves into what is okay or what will be um i think this energy uh coming up on the fifth is intensely pushing the endings on money matters um share resources other people's values again it's it's it sounds like i'm repeating myself but we're talking about layer upon layer pushing 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 uh this to happen and adding the need for us to find our own feet as i said we've been doing for the last year and a half plus another year and a half right um, so again, going back to the way I opened up this video about the time is now to take action. Look, <clears throat> if you want something to manifest by October, November, December, the end of this year, um, now's the time, right, to put out those applications for housing, work, um, loans, whatever financial opportunities uh, you are wanting to close this year out with, now is the time to initiate that um, because the door is soon shutting as we get into heavier and heavier retrograde energies. Um, some of the resources, I'm sorry to say I don't mean to scare anybody, I'm trying to forewarn you, to um, forearm you, right, prepare you. 
I have to remind myself, um, some of the resources that you are banking on are not going to be here by the end of this year, okay? Um, and that is making your call to action right now even more important. Um, I'm telling you, put out seeds for plans A, B, and C, right? Put that if, if you're if you're wanting to stabilize your housing situation, be putting out multiple applications at multiple locations. Okay. Um, same with with um, looking for work. Uh, go after you know, machine gun it, right? Put out a lot of applications for that. Um, if you're trying to create as a, an entrepreneur with a side hustle, uh, more streams of revenue, now is the time for you to put um, that, um, that out there, for you to develop those streams, for you to um, put out more evergreen content, more intellectual property, more whatever, uh, services, invest in products to sell, whatever, okay? Um, now is the time to get all of that lined up so it carries you through the end of this year, okay? Um, I could go on. I think you get the idea, right? Abundance, right, with that Jupiter energy. Abundance. Um, cast your net far and wide, as far and wide as you can right now because the energy is not going to be like this, uh, it, decreasingly so as we get into the year, all right? I do think also because we are still uh, going to be in a bit of flux and a bit of holy shift into, you know, the first week of May with that that other, you know, lunar eclipse, do try to wait about mid-May-ish time frame to really, I think, uh, see more clearly how the energies are showing up for you and how things are shifting and just to take a pulse and get a dial tone on what's gotten swept away and what's getting ushered in, right, with the energies. Assess at that time. I mean, I put it on your calendar. I'm putting it on mine. Do a bit of a check-in with yourself um, mid-May to assess how you're going to plan to work with the energies and launch this new beginning and really nurture this new beginning and support it and facilitate it, right, and maintain it for the remainder of this year. Because um, also, I think by really the entire month of May could be a very pivotal time, a very pivotal turning point for many people with endings and new beginnings. So that's all I have for now. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to close out with a reminder. Make sure that you are doing what you need to do right now to initiate, to facilitate um, what you want your situation to be by the end of this year and seize the moment to reinvent your life now. I hope that encouraged you and I hope that blessed you as well. I'm looking forward to being connected with you again. Be blessed.